Hello there my precious little eggies, welcome back to the channel. If you've been watching my recent videos you may have noticed that I've been using a different camera lately for my b-roll. Well that mystery camera is none other than the Canon ES8400V, it's a very catchy name I know it sounds just like one of those high school calculators. Canon put out the camera in 2002. If you're counting in emo years, 2002 is the same year Taken Back Sunday release tell all your friends. It's a camcorder that uses Hi8 tapes. It's 2021 so rightfully so you might be saying to yourself, Why? 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 Camcorders, tapes, like have you ever heard of an SD card? Using tape in 2021, it comes with some challenges, I'm not gonna lie about that. But it's an awesome, nostalgic format, and it comes with a few perks that you might not have considered. So let me tell you all about that, but first, make sure you slap the fuck out of that subscribe button and obliterate the bell and tell all your friends by sharing this video. You see that? That's another Taken Back Sunday joke. You know, I'm, uh, I'm chocked full of them. Alright, let's get into the video. I think the aesthetics of this Hi8 footage speaks for itself. It's lo-fi for sure. You're not going to be getting that 16x9 super sharp footage you might be used to from your camera or even your phone. This footage is not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but it makes me nostalgic for my childhood. When I was a snotty poopy kid, my dad had a JVC camcorder. I actually showed it on this channel before, so filming on this format reminds me of how cool I always thought his camcorder was. Who knows, maybe that's why I gravitated towards this stuff in the first place. To me, one of the most iconic parts of the aesthetics is the zoom. That somewhat janky motorized zoom really pulls the whole look together, the same way the rug really pulled that room together, you know what I mean? It gives the footage that perfect dad core look, and that's kind of what I'm all about. I don't like making review style videos without adequately testing the camera or the film, whatever it is I'm using. I'd really like to get to know what I'm talking about. This is some epic foreshadowing for later on in the video. So I've used this camera a bunch. You've definitely seen it in videos on this channel if you're a subscriber, but I've done a few other productions with it as well. I filmed a music video for my friend Alex from Conversing with Oceans. The song is called Wasted and the music video is actually debuting today. You can go check that out after you watch this video, but don't leave me right now, baby. <laughs> I promise this video is cool. The song is about drinking and addiction and the loneliness that kind of comes with that. So the idea for the video initially was make it kind of feel like a throwback to the 90s handheld camcorder just kind of friends filming like a home movie sort of thing. The idea changed throughout the process but I'm really proud of how this video came out and I think the camera really added a lot to the aesthetic of it. I, it really does feel like someone was just kind of filming a show that was going on and like fly on the wall sort of stuff. I also collaborated with my buddy Nick from Grounds to make a short car video. It's like a promo, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I put the camcorder on my gimbal. That was an interesting uh, night. He used the EOS R5. I used the ES8400V, and those are basically polar opposites in terms of quality. The idea was to use the tape footage as B-roll in between the segments of the R5 footage. I thought it was an interesting addition to the video. And speaking of b-roll, we used this camera a ton for behind the scenes content for a short film we made on my other channel, Nailed It Network. The film is called Things That Blank My Blank, it's in the My Road Real Film Festival, go check it out. Links for all this stuff will be in the description below. But speaking about behind the scenes and b-roll and all that jazz, I was actually talking about this with Dave from the channel Noptop. This type of camera is the perfect behind the scenes camera. We'll talk more about the ease of use and ergonomics later, but I mean, look at this thing. It's compact, it fits in the camera bag with ease, it's unintrusive, and it's perfect for capturing moments. In a lot of ways, it kind of feels like a point and shoot film camera to me. I don't really need to think too much when I'm using it, and it never really gets in the way of what I'm doing, which is why it works really well for what I do, specifically on this channel. I've mentioned in the past that I have some pretty specific needs out of my video cameras. I need reliable autofocus, I need good menus, they have to be streamlined, nothing overly complicated or convoluted, <coughs> Sony. So when I'm making a video for this channel, you know, comparing Polaroid cameras or shooting a roll of film lugging around my big ass Mamiya, it's honestly nice to have a small, lightweight camera that can be somewhat autonomous. And yeah, this camera is not perfect, it makes some weird choices every now and then, but don't we all? In my experience with this, I've been able to just 
put it on top of my car, sit it on a tripod, put it on a counter, press record, and just focus on what I'm doing. It doesn't detract from me taking photos, which is really important to me. The important thing to keep in mind about this channel is that for about 90% of these videos, I don't have any help. I just do it by myself. So a camera like this where I don't have to worry so much and I can just kind of press record and have fun and do my thing, that's a big deal. I also think this camera works particularly well with my crapshoot series. Because in most cases, whether I'm shooting on film or Polaroid or just with my digital camera, the photos usually fit in that 4x3 aspect ratio better than the 16x9. There's a lot of empty real estate in the 16x9 frames. It almost feels like it's more conducive to the film stuff I shoot. Let's take a step back from this nerdy aspect ratio shit because I feel like some of you probably don't care at all about that. And instead I want to take a moment here to get super real with you guys. Pulling, we're pulling the sheets back on the channel a little bit. You see, there comes a time in every creative's life where they feel a little burnt out, where they feel like they've been doing the same thing for a while and maybe they get a little jaded or a little tired of it. And that sometimes is the case with this channel. Sometimes I do feel a little burnt out. Between working my full-time job doing freelance stuff like weddings and music videos and then doing this on top, sometimes it just feels like holy sh there's too much going on at once. Adding this camera to the mix was a breath of fresh air for me in this channel. It definitely helped to renew the fun factor. So this camera is really special to me. So even if you hate how the aesthetic looks, I'm having fun with it, so get used to it. <laughs> First of all, the camera feels great in the hand. I'm holding it right now, so if you hear the little plastic clicking sounds, uh, forgive me. It's super lightweight. The hand strap is pretty comfortable, though mine is disintegrating, so I just gaff taped it to make sure I didn't get leather bits all over my hand. But it feels great. The viewfinder, oof. The viewfinder will certainly remind you of the age of this camera because it only displays in black and white. And let me tell you, it is not good. The LCD screen honestly kind of impressed me. In bright sunlight, it really does fall apart and it's impossible to see, but in a lot of indoor scenarios, it looks pretty damn good considering the age of this camera. And not to throw shade at every modern camera that doesn't have this, but hey, uh, flip out screen. In terms of the controls, the big ones that you really need are right at your fingertips. The record button is on your thumb, the zoom is on your index finger. There are buttons that are further out of reach, for example, the fade button, which I think is super cool, but you kind of have to reach over the camera to actually press it. And for those who might not know, the fade button, basically you hold it and it either creates an in-camera fade in or an in-camera fade out. So you're kind of editing in-camera. There's a bunch of different modes on the camera. You have a sports mode, like a portrait mode. There's something for sand and snow. One of the most interesting modes though is known as flexi zone. The way this works is basically use this little joystick on the back of the camera and it moves around a square on your LCD screen. The camera will attempt to focus on whatever is inside that square. It's really interesting to see Canon's technology back here because it really just has evolved in their DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. The dual pixel autofocus looks really similar to the system. This is like dual pixel autofocus's grandpa. And keep in mind, this camera is not full auto. You actually do have a gear in the back that allows you to adjust your focus manually. Not that this would come as a surprise to most people, but in low light, the autofocus completely falls apart. It's just bananas. So you kind of have to use manual focus in those scenarios. It has all sorts of other features like backlight compensation, image stabilization, and exposure lock. The camera also has this really sick little video light. There is a button to take still photos, not entirely sure why you'd want to, but the option is there. The battery life is pure suffering. It takes really long to charge the battery, and it doesn't hold a charge for terribly long. One of my favorite parts of this camera is the switch that goes around the record button. It says lock and standby. The idea is you set your mode to auto or flexazone or portrait or whatever you want to use and set it to lock. So effectively the camera is off. You flip it to standby and you're ready to go. The camera turns right on and you press record and there you go, you're in the game. One thing that's kind of a bummer, I, I found out that this camera actually has video effects built into it, including this really sick ghost effect. Would have been great for the Wasted music video, but I had no idea it was there. This is another sad, sad case of not enacting the RTFM protocol. That's the read the fucking manual protocol. If I would have read that manual, I would have known about it before the shoot, but hey, at least I know for the future. Let us engage cinematic mode. Last but not least, I want to talk about the workflow. Now there are devices out there where you can plug the camera straight in via the AV connections and it'll just cut everything down to an SD card, which frankly I think I'm going to buy one of those because my workflow is pretty janky. But here we go. 
I take the AV out from the camera and run that into an HDMI converter, so it's AV to HDMI. Then I take the output from the converter and plug that into the input of my Elgato HD60. Then I rewind the tape, press play, and capture it with the Elgato Capture software. You have to capture this in real time. So if you record for an hour, you're going to be sitting there for an hour. Now as far as I know with the Elgato software, I actually can't capture this in 4x3, so it's capturing 16x9, so when I bring it into Premiere, I then have to conform it to the 4x3 frame. I didn't buy anything new because I had this stuff laying around already, the Elgato, I used it for some gaming stuff because I'm an epic gamer, and the converter I had laying around because I wanted to up-res my N64. Didn't work out very well for that, but it does work okay for this. But yeah, if you were curious, that's how I've been doing it for all these videos. Easy peasy, it's definitely not a huge hurdle in my process at all and doesn't slow these videos down significantly or anything like that. It's a pain in the ass, I'm not gonna lie. But between the aesthetic this camera gives me, the spontaneity it enables, and the fun that I have while I'm using it, I think it's totally worth it. Thanks so much for checking out this video, guys. Find me on the social medias, leave me a comment below and share the video. Alright, this video is now over. Like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Sweet, Sweet Lou Photography. photography. Domain. Domain.